Okay, so a very warm welcome to all of my students online and again today in my face to face class. I'm doing a dual lecture here to our week five lecture where we are going to continue to discuss the work life balance, uh, this time in the context of the ups and downs that you will have no matter how awesome you are. You're going to have these ups and downs and also the kind of stuff that causes the ups and downs, which is important to know because you can avoid some of this stuff. It's not that hard to do. Okay, so we're going to talk about the ups and downs, which kind of lines up with the chapters we're going through in the balance point book right now. But I'm really going to try and avoid the balance point book is a very easy read, just like our first book. So I'm never going to come in and try and lecture that I did have some stuff in the first book that I lectured directly to in the context of my career. I'm going to do sort of my own material that lines up with the balance point book. So ups and downs, tips from the pros, Holding second jobs because it really is possible. People get so negative about that and they're like, oh, you can't do it, you can't do it, you can't do it. And it is possible, you just need to listen to some leaders in the industry that have been able to do it successfully. Uh, like me, because I do teach here full time at Fanshawe College and I do enjoy my job uh, very much. And I wouldn't do anything with another career that would basically push me out of this job, but I do manage to still sell real estate on the side. So you can hold a second job. And then we'll just talk about some of those basic, you know, there's a million top 10 articles on the top 10 reasons why people succeed, the top 10 reasons why people suck, the top 10 reasons why you're going to make money in a sales job. There's, there's more than 10. And some of them are more important than others. And I have a list that I put together for you guys. You've seen Jordan talk about some of this stuff in his book, um, but I think it'll help to go over some of it together as a class. So here's how this lecture is going to work. I'm going to talk about some stuff. We're going to watch a video. Then we're going to discuss what we saw in the video. Then I'm going to talk about some more stuff with you guys. Watch a video, discuss, talk about a little more stuff, watch a video, discuss. And the full recording of this will not be that long because there's the time for the videos that I'm not going to record, obviously for my face-to-face -face students, we're just going to watch them together. And there's also the thought that you would be putting into it that I'm not going to record when you're maybe discussing together. And then we'll discuss back and forth. And my online students, why does that keep popping up? My online students will be able to hear the discussions we're having with my face-to-face -face group today because half the class didn't show up and that really annoys me. But we got a nice small section in a small classroom and you'll be able to hear everything. Uh, so we'll start with um, a list and I spent some time on this list. I went back to it a few days later and I kept saying, what are the things that actually create up and downs, some of which that are hard to avoid, that you just have to be prepared for this. No matter how many Tony Robbins videos you watch, and we're going to watch one today, you're going to run into stuff that just you can't avoid. It, it, it affects how your business is run. It affects sales. It affects how much money you're going to make of course, is connected to your sales. So I put at the top of my list, seasonality. Now, where do I sell real estate? You guys tell me. Summertime. summertime, yeah. In a summer town that has a lot less people going through it, basically the second we get past Labor Day. So I sell real estate in Grand Bend, Ontario. I started in London, right around Fanshawe College. Wow, that is so annoying, that thing keeps popping up. Um, there, that'll fix that. Sorry about that, guys, but it's mainly the audio that you're watching these videos for. Um, some of them I do my my face in the corner, but it never syncs up, right? It's kind of, yeah. But uh, So don't worry about those things popping up on the screen. We're watching this for the audio. So, yeah, seasonality, summertime. I shifted my focus to a market like that because I was doing two jobs, and my job at the college is a lot busier doing during the two primary semesters of the school year. Okay, I'm also busy in the summer during the two months I teach, but two of those months I'm off. And whatever two they are, Grand Bend is as busy as it gets between mid-May into August. We don't even get that big spring rush. We get, it's almost all summertime. So I really hurt for that extra income when the winter comes around and I've figured out ways to work around that. Okay, I can, I can charge people for consulting. Uh, I can do... Uh, additional marketing packages for people on the side getting ready for spring listings. I can try and pick up some more of my London leads because I'm at the college anyway. But 
at the end of the day, I have a second job, so it's not as big of a deal for me. But even if you're not in a summer town, like I am a summer town, you're still going to find that real estate does follow very common seasonal ups and downs. Spring is hot. For some reason in big city markets, December gets hot again. It's like people are out buying houses for Christmas. I don't know, I'm not sure. Um, and then of course, and the next thing you have to deal with is you cannot stop the economy. When the economy gets bad and people stop buying houses and supply goes way up and prices go down and it's harder to sell things, there's nothing you can do about it. You can't stop the economy from not allowing people to make as much income. You can't stop the government, actually. I didn't, some of that uh, is in here, regulatory changes. For, uh, if we shift out of it, I don't think it's as big of a deal as a general economic climate, but the government putting all those stress tests on banks so that it makes it harder for all of you guys. You're gonna graduate, okay? And most, I don't know about my online students, I'll meet you eventually, I think most of you are pretty young, but my students here in my face, you guys are what? Is there anybody in here over 30? 25, over 25. Okay, two people over 25, three, the rest are under 25. It is gonna be next to impossible for you to get a mortgage graduating from school unless you've literally been working four full time for at least four years while you were at school, which who the heck wants to do that? You'll fail out of school. It's, they, they, it's, it's like when you go and try and get a, a job waiting tables and they never will give you one because you haven't waited tables before, but you can't learn how to wait tables unless you get a job waiting tables. It puts you into this catch 22, right? So it's regulatory stuff like that, which also kind of ties into general economics because the reason banks had to tighten up in the states, in states like Michigan and Florida, is because stuff completely collapsed. Real estate just went down huge, like 50, 60, 70% in a matter of a year and a half because the regulations on so many of these mortgages were not strict enough and people were just walking away. It's, it's, there's a lot more to it than that. I'm simplifying it quite a bit. Uh, generational shifts can actually create really big ups in real estate markets. So right now in Grand Bend, there's a ton of stuff for sale on Main Street because all the people that own these businesses for the last 20 or 30 years, they're all about the same age. They're all just going to sell around the same time. But it's like, what's wrong? Nothing's wrong. People are just retiring, right? So you see a lot of commercial property come up because of generational shifts. You see a lot of generations shift from big houses with big lots and trees and all this stuff that are hard to take care of into apartments. And they will move into there, which creates leasing markets and, and more sales of condos and stuff like that. And the younger buyers that have sold their houses for a ton of money in the Kitchener Waterloo region are coming up to Grand Bend and buying their houses. Generational shift can be a really good thing for real estate. Um, family shifts, like in your own personal family, can create obstacles. Well, here's a job. I got to take this job. I don't know what to do now. Oh, man. I, I have built a business in a community, like we talked about for the first several weeks, how great it is when you're, when you're from a small town and you can tap into those resources and your sphere of influence is so tight. It's big. It's bigger than it probably would be in the city, but they all know each other. So it's even tighter knit and you can tap into that huge, especially if none of your friends are realtors. If, if my wife were to tell me, I want to change our life and I want to move out to BC, well, I might actually say yes to that, but <laughs> there's a lot of stuff out for me in BC and the kind of sports I like to do, but I would lose a ton of income if my family was thinking about that kind of change. That's families shifting, right? My kids are getting older. Now they're getting into all these sports and I don't have as much time to devote to my sales career. Think about that, right? Uh, I want my wife to work with me and we get along really well, but us working together, that might not be that good. So the family dynamics of our husband-wife relationship aren't conducive to that. And the last thing I want to do is hire another partner because then I'm giving the income up to that person. So it's, it's tough and this can affect your ups and downs. Your personal health, of course, this should have been near the top more, physical, mental, everything. Industry changes, regulatory changes, you're gonna learn all that stuff and you're gonna know it inside and out and then a year from now, they're gonna change everything. They're gonna change the platform, they're gonna change the upload website. They've changed the website where we upload listings three times since I've been a realtor. And each time it has gotten better and I'm good with that technology, but my elder colleagues, they freaking lose it. They, I, you guys know what I mean. It's like when they change 
When they changed Microsoft Office from the standard drop down menus to the ribbon, do you remember your parents when that happened? You probably don't, because that was like, God, you guys were like, what, 12 when that happened? Oh, oh my, like the, the older users that resist that kind of change, because you, most of you in here are millennials, maybe some Gen Z maybe, that, that grew up in the digital generation, but millennials were digital since you guys were maybe seven or eight, and then you, you, you took right to tablets. You were, this was part of your life right away. My kids had tablets in their hand before they were two, right? And, and this is educational for me. I don't have a problem with that. They're not watching like, well, like sometimes. I, they see some stuff on YouTube, but you have to be on top of that stuff so that when the industry changes, you can change with it. So this also ties into technology. So the industry changes and regulatory changes tie into keeping on top of technology. I put technology at the bottom because it can be like a, an affording thing and you can hire people, which, uh, where did I have pay to play? Um, oh, that's, that's in another thing. Some of these repeat themselves later once we watch the third video. So alternative products, okay. Timely responsiveness, overcommitment, undercommitment, all these things. And some of these are taken from previous notes too, because you're gonna see these things recurring again and again. These create inconsistency because they can change at the drop of a dime, right? I get back to people within an hour. As soon as my grandfather passed away, I, there was people that called me, I didn't get back to him for a week, okay? Because of something that happened in my life. So these are all intertwined. You can overcommit, you can undercommit. Um, of course, money, budgeting, that changes all the time. Things might happen, your car might break down unexpectedly. We know from the last lecture, you need a freaking car. So this is a big deal. And then just your general exposure. This is a really interesting one. We've talked about te technology. So let's end there and then we'll start this video, okay? Your general exposure to a selling environment. Now, what do I mean by that? Even if you're not in sales, especially millennials, holy cow. Are you guys selling all the time? How? Because you are and you know what I'm talking about. Maybe you're not selling products, but you're you're always pitching something. You just convinced me to make a small scheduling change. That was well, maybe not. You didn't have to sell it. <laughs> um, say that. Social media uses and everything like that. Um, oh, that's a good example. Yeah, I think people people on social media are constantly selling a life. Basically, you're you're showing, hey, dig me. This is what that's what social media is. Like, hey, look what I'm doing. That's how it started. That's all it is. Hey, look what I'm doing. Hey, look what I saw. Look at this picture of where I was. Right? And you can do it in a way that does add value to the friends that you have on social media. And you can exchange things of the same kind of thing you saw. And hey, what is that? Where'd you get that? Where can I buy one of those? That kind of thing, right? Your influences. Your influences, which means you're always selling. You're You'll buy something and without even knowing it, you've become a marketing rep for this company, okay? You wanna see a movie and the person you're dating doesn't wanna see that movie. Who wins? The person who sells that, right? <clears throat> uh, guys, you, you're constantly okay. selling. You wanna watch a show. It's now it's all about binging on shows, right? I wanted to start a different show and my wife won with Good Girls. Um, That's good. That's yeah, good. which I, good I am enjoying. I have good, <laughs> good show. Yeah, and it was about time that what's her name hooked up with the gangster guy. I was like, geez, what took so long for that? <laughs> so, and I, I love that character. I love that actress too. She was in um, Fist Fight. It's, it's, she played the French teacher or whatever. She's been in a bunch of stuff. But um, that wasn't my first choice. But my wife made some compelling arguments based on other people's reviews. That she can, you know, so this is like, I'm constantly exposed to that because I'm in a relationship uh, with someone who likes similar stuff but a little bit different. I have three kids. Oh my gosh, am I selling stuff to them? Um, so you may find yourself in life sometimes where the kind of, of life you're in, you're not exposed to that anymore. And that means you're not practicing. And that means you're gonna go into some downs because you need to practice to be good in sales. So let's start getting through these videos, okay? This guy has this sort of, it's, it's hard to pick them out of the video. We'll talk about it briefly afterwards, but he's, he's a salesperson, of course, 
And the video in itself is pitching him to come and do these kind of things for your company type of thing. But I really like, I, I do a lot of research on these videos and this guy says some things that I think are really important. And if you uh, pay attention to some of the things in this list, you'll see that you could use some of the stuff he talks about to work around that. Okay, so let's, so all my online students, just pause the video now. You're gonna go and watch this video from the slides, okay? At this point, I will expect that you've reviewed this video. Um, I do have in my playlist, by the way, for my face-to-face -face and my online students, I have a, a little video that shows you how to pull the transcripts from YouTube videos, if you wanna use them for notes. It's only about five minutes long, it's pretty cool. It's something that I was doing uh, for a while when I was trying to find keywords and videos to see what was performing better. It was for the web design course, but it's it's pretty handy that YouTube makes that so easy. So if that's an easier way for you to go through stuff, I think it's just as easy to watch and listen to the video. That was a podcast, so that wasn't really a video. So this guy wants to know, are, are, you, are you in or are you out on a sales career? So the main points here, um, I mean, yeah, this One stuff is time. this stuff is pretty basic, um, but the main points would have been control your destiny, a sales career, right? You can do that. You can really do that. I know it sounds like a lot of fluff, and it's oh, you're going to be your own boss and make so much money, but it's true. Okay, I do pay out a lot of my commissions to the brokerage that I work for, but that doesn't mean I, I don't make a bunch too. And, and I can't do that at Fanshawe College. I can't control what I make. Look what happens when we try to control what we make. What does that turn into? A strike, yeah, it's a very different type of environment. So the sales environment is not like that. And then he made some really neat points that uh, I'm putting up on the screen here for my online students that 13% of the salespeople are naturally born. That means that out of every 100 salespeople, uh, only 87 of them, or sorry, 87 of them, were not naturally born based on this research. Okay, and that led to the nurture versus nature discussion, which is, hey, you know what, we're all in sales. And this is something we were just discussing about you working with your significant other, working with your family, trying to pitch them on something, trying to convince somebody of something, being on social media, uh, loving what you're, product, what you're selling does for your clients as opposed to loving it. And you should like it. Like he said, you, you need to respect it. And like I really enjoy real estate. I like houses. I like seeing different houses. I like building and construction. But I love it the most when I find somebody that perfect place and we get there before everybody else and we get it done. Uh, use a process. That's a good one. There's lots of sales training courses out there. There's lots of like 10 step processes. There's tons of brokerages that offer this kind of stuff to new realtors when you get into the business. And I didn't need it. I'd been in sales and telecommunications before. I never went to those meetings when I switched to Royal Page, but a lot of the people I work with said that it helped them. And it doesn't mean you have to stick to that process the way it's given to you. You can make it your own and you can also do the KPIs. Like say, I'm gonna call back at least three leads today. I'm gonna make a, a quota for myself on what I'm going to do in terms of lead emails and, and just stuff like that. So some obvious stuff, but a list of seven things that that have you thinking, wait a minute. OK, if I go back to this slide, I can work around these things. I don't have to be the perfect ultimate salesperson. And that's the question I want to ask here is, you know, do you think Victor's ideas may not always pan out? I'm asking you guys why. Why, why do you think it might not be that simple? Um, Hence my statement. So it's that easy, that's it. What do you think? I mean, obviously, all the things I talked about on the first slide before we watched the video. He said right at the end, you're gonna go through ruts. Right? Why would think about your own life? Anybody in my room here? Why might you have a rut? And it's okay to talk. Personal life. Personal life. Break up. That's going to mess you up pretty good for a while. A pet death, if your pet dies. I've seen people go off the deep end for months because the dog died, like literally. You cannot predict what's going to happen in your life, but when you're in charge of your own sales career, that might screw you up pretty good. That's what's so scary. 
That's why you need that work-life balance. And that's a huge point you need to take away from this lecture, is that it's, I can just keep going to finish up. I, I went through a really bad breakup working here at the college. And I still performed just fine. I had one class where I had sort of a hissy fit about students talking that I probably wouldn't have reacted to such an extreme level if I had not been going through a bad breakup. But could I have been selling real estate at that time when I was clinically depressed? Like I was a mess. There's no freaking way. So you, but I could, I could still work a normal nine to five union job, like a salary job. I, I was okay to get through that. So there's some danger there. There's some risk. You, you don't know what's going to happen. And it's all those things in that list that I showed you that might not make it that easy. He didn't say why you have the ruts. I'm already talking to you about that. Okay. Jordan Ringer talks about it in the book. He talks about why you go through stuff and how you can, you got to get past it, right? Don't give up. I know it sounds silly. Oh, this whole three weeks, Mikey just said, don't give up. Try hard. You can have anything you want. It's dangerous to tell kids they can have anything they want, especially kids like my kids. You, 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 we need to start rephrasing these things the way they were told to us. Like I'm, I'm Gen X, so I was told you, you, you get out there and you, and you, you bust your hump and you, you work hard. You're going to have anything you want. The world is your oyster. You guys probably haven't heard that saying for a while because it's really not like that anymore. It, it's getting harder and harder. And a sales career is a place where you can still make a lot of money. So will it always pan out? Can you get through the ups and downs? That's kind of up to you, but I just gave you seven really good reasons to motivate you to do it. You don't have to be a naturally born salesperson, okay? You can learn it. You can help yourself stick to a process and push through the ruts and all, all the stuff Victor talked about there, okay? So let's take another pause again off my video. And this one's a little bit longer and then the last one's shorter again. This is a guy, that I'm sure you guys have heard of. Have anybody, anybody in this room heard of Tony Robbins? Tony Robbins, anyone? Really? Oh, he's a cool guy. And he's, he's one of the, the best known motivational speakers in the world, okay? The reason my students, mostly 25 and under, haven't heard of him yet is because you guys are in a position in your lives where you probably wouldn't have needed to go to a resource like this. I'm trying to show you this in advance so you think about these things ahead of time and then you don't have to fall back on them later because things didn't work out. You can start like this. Okay, this is what all the smart young entrepreneurs are doing. So, yes, a little bit of the fluffy stuff, okay, but Tony Robbins wouldn't be like world renowned if this stuff wasn't working. So, let's give him a listen and see what he has to say. And once again, my video uplink. There we go. Okay, so my guys at home, you can pause the video again and watch Tony Robbins and come right on back here and we'll discuss. Uh, Victor Frankel, by the way, was a guy that there's a lot of criticism I'm seeing here on Wikipedia, but he's a guy that was um, detained in concentration camps and then came up with some sort of medical treatment. But he, he was a big believer in, in mind over matter and just like basically uh what does it say here say yes to life like make the best of anything and he allegedly made the best of what he was dealing with in a concentration camp i'm not sure about that and i know that um okay that's i don't want to say it's out there it's not out there at all these are things that that Billion dollar like CEOs are, are, are using to improve their lives. Like, this is uh, not a line of thinking that the world hasn't embraced, I guess is the way I'm trying to say it. So, is this real? Yes. Can this help you in a sales career? Absolutely. Because if you're just enjoying yourself, that rubs off on people. I didn't really get into that too much in there. That was more about taking care of you, right? And it's, it, he's not the first one to come up with the theme that it's all about love. And he's talking about it's all about love for oneself. I mean, it's, that, that was like the whole theme in the Harry Potter books, was that it's all, that's how they beat Voldemort, right? This is, 
This monks have believed in this for centuries and centuries, yet people get so hung up. I, I sit here doing this lecture to you knowing that I get hung up on the wrong stuff. That it doesn't really matter. Right now I'm all mad that I paid so much money for a lot of the stuff that was done on our house. And it's not done right. And these guys are just brushing it off. And it's like a lot of money. Um, but you know what? I, I've got a great life. Like, who cares? Have fun with it. See how much I can choke back out of them, right? Yes? I feel like this is that kind of video that you like frequently would, should be able to watch or should watch, right? And oh my God, I've watched it like probably 25 times in the last year because I've been, I've gotten myself into situations where I can just barely handle everything I'm doing and I, I have to remind myself that the reason I'm doing it is to enjoy my life. It should not become your life. That's a really good point. Yes, you should. You need to remind yourself that whatever you decide to do, whether it's a sales career, whether it's working at Fanshawe College, whether it's starting your own business, making you know bonnets for babies. There's all these mommy businesses now that have blown up. Oh, it's you gotta look on Instagram. It's freaking nuts. Like whatever it is that you're gonna do, that is not your life. It shouldn't be. Okay. My work's my life. I hate when people say that. My family's my life, but all I do is work. So I'm not doing, I'm not practicing what I'm preaching. And that's that's not necessarily a good thing, but I, it's also one of the reasons I was excited to teach this course. I thought maybe it could even help me. Because when we get to the second half of this course, all you're going to see is, holy cow, Sloan is selling a ton of real estate. Sloan knows all this stuff about real estate. Look at how much we're learning that we've never learned in those courses at Humber College. Oops. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> so it's it's really important that you start with you. I love when he said people get people kill themselves making everybody else happy except themselves. Okay? So it, there's there's a lot of big takeaways in there. Um th what did I miss? Like come on, you guys are you guys are actually paying attention to that. I can tell. Like what what did I miss? Yeah, he's a cool guy. They're playing that cool music in the background. You're kind of like, it makes, sometimes at night I just watch that. I'm serious. I, I hate admitting this to you guys. I, I'll just watch that at night before I go to sleep. And I'll be like, yeah, man, I'm badass. I'm going to do all this. I love me. I love my family. But I love me, right? It was weird when I was going through another breakup. I don't know what's with my bad breakups. I swear, I was so happy because I did nothing but write all these awesome tunes. And I was like, wow, I'm writing songs like my brother now. My brother writes, he was always, he always had the catchier hooks, right? We wrote a lot of music together. Um, but it's just like, no matter how upset I got about stuff, I'd sit down and, and get into my music and I'd just love myself for it. It'd be weird. It, it's, and that led to me meeting my wife and starting a career at Fanshawe College and all these things. Well. Getting full time at Fanshawe College. I was already working here, but it's I really focused on me. Um, where a lot of people go through traumatic experiences and they they just completely stop taking care of themselves. It's it's you know what I mean. You've seen it happen with family members, and it's it stuff's hard, right? Um, anything else he mentioned that I missed? Because there's a lot of good things in there, and it's hard to keep track of all the stuff he's talking about. Yeah. I do really like when he um, he mentioned that us as humans we're we're set up to for survival. We're not like, meant to pursue happiness. It's just we're supposed yeah. to pursue survival, right? Because that's how we're built, I guess. And I physiologically think, speaking, yeah, yes. I kind of agree with that, right? So then that's why you would have to remind yourself of all these things. Yeah. Yeah. Good point. Yeah. That that. And that's why a lot of people, they go through a life, you know, it's like a Bon Jovi song, working at the factory, you know, like just trying to make a dime. And then it's like, what's all this worth? I, <laughs> I wish I was still recording this, but, but it's true. So many country songs and big rock songs, especially 80s ballads, like they're about trying to be happy, even though they all sound like they're you know, angry at somebody breaking up with somebody else. It's this is something that's been going on for a long time. I just think since the Industrial Revolution. And when, okay, let's see if you paid attention in high school. When was the Industrial Revolution? Not not the you know Billy Madison version of it. 
late 1800s, right? Like mid to late 1800s. So much has changed in the last 150 years compared to the thousands of years before that. And the, the sheer amount of information that we're assaulted with. And there's a there's a video I'll put in here. It's, it's called, Did You Know? Is it, have any of your professors made you watch this? It's a stats video. It's just, you're gonna watch the thing going, what, no way, come on. It's just a bunch of stats. I'll put it in the week five content. Did you know? Um, it, it's shocking just the amount of information and media that's out there. And the more of that stuff that's there, I think the more we lose a grasp on ourselves. It's just a hard lecture to give. Like I'm trying to, I'm trying to teach you to take care of yourself in the context of working in a sales career. Because when you're kicking ass at being you, you're gonna sell stuff. It's it's true. You're gonna sell stuff. Okay. This one we're just gonna watch a little bit of, and then we're gonna wrap up. Oh, I'm falling out of my chair. Then we're gonna wrap up. This is um, another one that I wanted to discuss because this always comes up. Every realtor is saying, well. One of the main reasons people fail is because they just, they work as a part-time, what's wrong with that? Why can't you do real estate on the side and have a really tight focus? And I, right now I'm probably, I'm a full-time realtor and pretty much a full-time, you know, professor. I mean, <laughs> it's it, 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 it's hard to do both things at the same time. I have to figure out what time I said that because I said that backwards. So right now I'm a full-time professor and I'm pretty much a full-time realtor. Uh, it, it's tough to balance those two things, but I, I have to push the smaller ones aside. I have to send some referrals out. There's lots of things you can do. This guy's video has some good ideas. We're, gonna, we're just gonna watch the beginning part of it, maybe the first five minutes. Um, I'd like my, my online students at home to watch the entire thing, and then we're gonna come back one more time and discuss. Okay, here we go. Okay, so we're, we're wrapped up with the Kevin Ward video, and He's got five main points he's making. I, I try to choose videos where there's always like specific points made. I know Tony Robbins kind of made a bunch of them. Um, but the first video and the last video here, we had the seven points, the first video, five points here. So Kevin Ward's thinking is that you can be a part-time realtor, but this should happen on your path to be a full-time realtor. And that's the only part of it I don't necessarily agree with. Because I think people have the time in their lives, especially with the time we spend on social media, to, to really take in a discipline. And under, I've met people that know real estate better than I do, that have never been licensed real estate salespeople. Because it's a hobby, and they're obsessed with it. So he's right, though, about that first point, which is be a pro. You gotta know your shit, literally. I'm putting that in the notes, like know your shit, okay? Be a, and if you're going to be a part-time realtor, that's fine. Be part-time so you're available as a professional, part-time, not a sometime realtor. So that was his number one point. Is it? That's fine. You want to only do it part-time. But when you're doing it, you better be really good at it. The problem with part-time realtors is they don't get involved enough. To, and I was already picking up student rentals and buying houses. And I have friends that are builders. I've always been really into real estate. I've been into analysis. I've been into just figuring out what I might get for something. When I, it's just one of those things, right? Um, his second main point, which, which is the only one I did, don't agree with, is have a plan to go full time. These will be in the notes I put on that below. It'll be in there. Um, have a plan to go full time. Good, okay. If you don't happen to have another job that has really good benefits and it's a great backdrop for you as a realtor. I'm the luckiest guy in the world that I have a boss at Fanshawe now that actually supports my being a realtor. Um, and so did my old boss, really. They always have, all of them have. But she, to the point, my new boss, to the point where she's having me redo the real estate course. So now I'm out selling real estate when I'm not teaching and basically taking notes for the course to teach to you guys. I'm, I'm doing two things at once, it's amazing. But I get to, when I said backdrop, I get to, tell my clients I'm the marketing professor realtor. Real estate advertising and, and RICO's guidelines, the Real Estate Council of Ontario does not allow you to just say whatever you want about yourself. Oh, I'm the best. Really? What are you the best at? You need to qualify it and have a specific statement and explain it all. It's really funny. So I can say I am the marketing professor realtor and put a little asterisk there and put down the bottom of the ad. I'm a full-time tenured marketing professor 
at a major business school in Ontario. And that qualifies the statement, and I am. And I'm a better realtor because of it, and I'm a better teacher because I'm a realtor. So it's, I got very, very lucky, but that doesn't mean you can't be a realtor so that you get better deals on investment properties and really you're a property manager. That doesn't mean you can't be a realtor and be an appraiser at the same time. You could do both jobs. They would really complement each other. Um, you could get your real estate license because you and your partner are out buying a bunch of properties and it's gonna save you a bunch on, co on commission to put back into the company. Uh, I see a lot of people uh, get into real estate um, before they become developers. And then as they become developers, they still continue to practice in real estate. So there's lots of jobs that work hand in hand. I happen to teach and do real estate. I see a lot of people do that too because people in the public sector get, well, pretty much the same time we get off in the summer teaching in the college system, maybe a couple extra weeks. Um, but I do stay on top of my business all year long. I stay in touch with people. I don't just turn it off the second school starts. And no, I'm definitely not doing that because I'm teaching it. Uh, so do I have a plan to go full-time and drop Fanshawe College? No, never. Am I a full-time realtor in the summer? Yeah, probably. I'm in a seasonal town. So there, there's my get around on his second rule that you have to go full-time. I just picked a seasonal town where most of my colleagues aren't selling stuff in the winter either. I just happen to have another job, okay? Devote some time each day for leads. Like, I, we know you have another job, you're doing something else, but an hour a day, leads, okay, follow up. Don't leave people hanging. I do that constantly because they haven't qualified themselves with the conversation I had with them. I have a listing right now around $200,000. Most of the people that are expressing an interest know that I already have an offer on it. I'm following up with them. That's just rude not to follow up. But they're like, oh, let me know if you have anything else. And let, I'm not even putting them in my book because people like that have typically been shopping for the cheapest thing on the market for the last five years. Five years ago, I put them all in my book and it took too much time. So I, if I was a full-time realtor though, I'd be staying in touch with all of them. I, I'm not advising you guys not to do that. Um, always be practicing and training. Always be learning new things. Whenever they change the systems, I go in and just learn it. Because that's the kind of stuff, I'm barely on social media. I pay somebody else to do my social media. I know the Terranet Geo Warehouse Land Registry System better than any realtor. Most realtors don't even know that you can go in and get impact reports on these properties. They're now advertising it in the new view for the system. Like it's, it's just these things really help you when you're working with customers. And the final thing he was gonna put in there that you would have seen in the video was have a mentor, okay, have some, and that's, for me, that was Adam Miller. He was always there when I need, I don't know what's going on with every aspect of the business, so I just call up Adam and I'm like, help me out. Now he's running a brokerage, so it's to his benefit that he gets me selling more, because then he makes more money, because they're getting a cut. Now past a certain amount, they, they stop getting money for me, but I still, they, they, that's not true actually, I still pay my monthly fees for all that brokerage support, Right, so it's, this is one more thing I wanted to discuss in the context of my course where you're gonna get everybody telling you, oh, stop, you can't get your real estate license and do it part-time, you won't get, no, just, just be smart. Just learn your stuff and be really good about it. And you can do it part-time. Maybe the other thing you're doing for your other job actually helps you learn more about real estate too. You never know. So um, finally, at the end here, and then we'll wrap up uh, some things you can do to better, and this this is not just because it was in the course outline. I just, I wanna remind you guys that while a lot of these things are really obvious, most of the time we're not doing them, okay? Don't show up at showings with a hangover. I mean, don't do stuff like that, right? It's not gonna be good for your business. Every time I've done it, it has not helped me, okay? And it's happened, believe me. It may or may not have happened on Saturday because I never ever drink anymore and I decided I was gonna go out and kind of celebrate with some buddies because we just moved into the new house and we had a ton of stuff to do with the new house on Saturday. I had three showings booked in different places with different buyers. It was a total mess of a day. Um, so be better slept before you go out and take your buyers out, right? Sleep, diet, exercise, duh, really obvious, but I'm just reminding you guys, these are things, these are at the top of everyone's list why people succeed. 
Uh, who was it? I think it was Dale Carnegie. It's like, get up before everybody else. Dale Carnegie is a famous sales trainer guy. Just wake up before everybody else because they're not up yet and you're doing stuff. Seems too obvious, right? Always be learning. Uh, love what you do and do what you want. This is, you know, love what you do and do what you love. These are sayings that have been going around for a long time, but really, if you don't like it, but you know you like sales, maybe, just get into selling something else. Uh, time management is huge, so you're gonna see a lot of repeats from our notes from last week now. Um, good leadership, so I had, I had my brokers and they were helping me out all the time and they're showing me when I'm making mistakes that they don't want other people seeing, things like that, right? And then of course the character, the honesty and integrity thing, but when I bring it into the context of you guys with the work-life balance and, and being yourself and loving yourself and trying to live your life even as you're working, then the golden rule comes up. What's the golden rule? What do all our parents say the golden rule is? What does your grandmother say? Do unto others as they would do unto you, right? Treat people how you want to be treated. I am going to put some of this stuff on the next test. And if you guys get it wrong, I'm going to be like, what the hell? What's going on with these people? Like, this is important stuff. I'm, there's not, this is going to be a, the, the obvious common sense stuff might be a smaller portion of the test, but this, test coming up will be the one that if if you enjoy your life and you're a good person, you could probably go and take this test and do well on it without even having seen my videos or gone through my lectures. Um, pay to play, this is the big one, okay? Suck it up, get a new laptop, right? <laughs> you, know, you know, buy a good camera. Pay. When you get that multi-million dollar listing, you are not taking those photos, okay? Hire a freaking photographer, hire the videographer. Don't become, don't be a jack of all trades. You don't need a drone and 10 cameras and you're a realtor and you're doing a million things. That is actually maybe a good, you could do aerial photography on the side and also be in real estate. That's not the worst combination I've heard of, but in terms of having multi jobs, right? But that's that's hard stuff to learn. Like my drone guy, he's been into those things since they came out. Nobody can touch him. Like his footage is amazing. But his equipment costs a ton of money, right? So I just pay him. I'm not saying buy the drone, I'm saying, Spend the money where you need to spend the money. It's important you do that. Be creative, try different things, don't be shy. Just operate within the guidelines that you're gonna learn from the Real Estate Council of Ontario when you take those courses. Don't be all too cool to ask your parents if they wanna use you when you're a realtor. Like, what the heck? There's so many people like that. They're like, oh, I don't wanna just, you know, do all my business with family, but your family is gonna connect you to more people that they know that you don't, and then you're gonna, and that's just gonna, one leads to another, leads to another. Learn from your mistakes. I've made mistakes and I've, and I don't do them now, the same ones at least, I'll do new ones, and I'll learn from those. Uh, ignore the haters. Stop listening to these people. Oh, there's too many realtors. We know how many of them are actually out there selling. Not that many, okay? Stop it, it's, it's no big deal. Don't make excuses, especially to clients. They hate that. When you show up late, tell them what happened if it was a good story, right? I got my driver's license taken away once and it was a mistake, okay? I have to listen to my video, it was not, not, I wasn't doing anything illegal. It was a mistake and I had to get picked up and I, I ended up, I, I got it back the next day, but I ended up getting a ride and it was all this weird thing um, when I first come over to Canada and I was not in real estate but I had a meeting okay? and it had to do with me teaching here. And I just immigrated and I was meeting another professor and this guy's, he was, he was doing me a bunch of favors, right? And I, he's going out of his way for me. And I, I showed up like an hour late and I'm, on my cell phone, I don't know, my phone was dead and he was just so mad. So I just told him, like, listen, this is what happened. I, I, I was embarrassed to even call you. The truth will set you free, right? It didn't really help me that much that day, but just be honest with people. All right, no excuses. Just tell me, and, and had I not been too busy when I was immigrating here to get the proper license plates on my car and do what I was supposed to do on time when I was supposed to do it, none of that would have happened. So it did come down to me and I took accountability for it, right? Suck it up and be grateful when people buy them presents, like get them gift cards, like show them that you give a crap, like be grateful. When people spend a lot of money with you, that's a big deal. When you buy your first house, that's gonna be a huge deal. Your job as a real estate salesperson is to facilitate people through that process over and over and over again. Think about how big of a deal, every time that happens, it's a huge deal. 
every house. So these are all the things that I want to remind you guys about. And then of course, again, I'm going to bring up technology because when stuff is changing and it's changing your industry, you have to change with it. You cannot be playing games with that. Okay. Um, that's it for this time. There'll be some more resources in FOL content. Please take a look at them. And in our next class, we're going to talk about the report project and how we're going to do that.